gonna pause that. Greetings. <laughs> I done played out that song. <laughs> Greetings, welcome. Thank you for stopping by here on TikTok Live at The Real Bloom From Within Love. I go by Boomy. Hope y'all doing well wherever you are on the globe this Wednesday, April 27th, I want to say 2022, um, whatever time it is, wherever you are on the globe. Um, and of course, later, if it's on YouTube, whenever you click on this, greetings, <laughs> welcome. And um, in the title, you guys, I think I put something like, it was all lies or something like that, or they lie to you or something to that effect. Now, believe it or not, it's not going to be about what you think or what some of you may think, okay? It's going to be more about who you are, what you come from, and maybe some of your ancestors or passed on loved ones um, that you knew in this lifetime, and you were told um, certain stories about them, okay? And... Um, you know, you believed it. I mean, rightly so, right? Rightly so. Hold on one second here. I'm not going to stall out too much because I'm going to put this on my YouTube. So I really don't want to stall out in terms of uh, waiting for folks to get in here. So just greetings and welcome if you're here. I'm not going to stall out in terms of what I need to share here. I'm just going to get straight away into it. So that way, you know, it's not too drug out and I could go ahead and upload it to the YouTube uh, platform to be fair. Okay. So if you're coming in and I don't see you here, just welcome. Thank you. Because I'm just going to basically jump right into what I need to say and share here. Okay. So this is about, you know, whether it was grandparents, uncles, aunts, whomever, um, in your life that you knew in this lifetime and they're, um, they're passed on, they're passed away. And you were told certain things your entire life about them, but in part, um, I'm going to be sharing some truths because this is my story, okay? But it's going to be resonating with some of you who have very similar paths to myself. So like in my case, I was raised by my maternal grandmother, okay? Uh, those who are close or familiar with my family are aware that I was raised by my maternal grandmother um, and come to find out, you know, these stories about her have been very convoluted and distorted, but it's because she had a karmic daughter, okay? Her uh, karmic daughter, which was my mother. So as is typical of any divine being, when we are too attached to karmic energy, whether it be our own offspring, uh, lovers, whomever, family members, this distorts your path, okay? It weakens you. And I believe that that is what took place in part with my grandmother. She was an earth angel or star seed indigo or something even deeper than that. However, she forfeited, but it was more to do with um, the fact that the times that she was in on top of she had a karmic daughter that was into black magic and spell work. And that had started doing that with um, her youngest uh, born's um, family members. Um, father's people. Okay. And so there had been rituals and spell work on top of from her own karmic daughter, but there was others in her lineage in her family um, that she just wasn't aware of. Okay. That was doing this on her, which created the distorted energy. Okay. She reneged her path, which would have given her the strength um, to fight the stuff off. Okay. That's the only place you find it. But when we renege that, we are prey, even as a divine being, okay, to the spell work, the rituals, um, all these things that people will put upon you that causes you to slip into depression. It causes you to, you know, different mental illnesses um, and physical sickness. I mean, you know, they're doing rituals to send you death and destruction. They're doing rituals to send you cancer. They're doing rituals to um, mind control to make, you know, to project their energy onto you, to have you act out in certain ways based on the energies that they're sending you. So they're hexing you and they're basically manipulating your energy because the safety is in the surrender to your divinity and your path. So my grandmother was under all of that. Okay. She was the scapegoat of her bloodlines, just like I am. 
Okay. And she, you know, was kind of treated differently and isolated and, and, um, blamed and all sorts of stuff. But the whole family always kept silent about it. Everybody smiled about it. Everybody pretended about it. And in some cases, downright lied about it. Okay. Um, just to keep up an image because that's the culture. That is the curse. That is the curse. Pretending like there isn't toxicity there. Pretending like there hasn't been severe violations against one's own blood. Pretending. Okay. That is the curse in itself. A lot of people don't get this. They think by going to church and saying a Bible scripture that that's going to change it. And it doesn't. So, um, my grandmother on my, you know, my mother's side, she's, you know, the stories I was told about her were totally distorted. Okay. She did suffer. She was abusive. Um, again, this is what happens to us when we're not dealing with our pain and worse yet. We're, we're not surrendering to the path. So we're open sesame. We're open prey. Okay. So she had all of this trauma and pain on top of spell work. And so she projected it out as is normal when we don't do what we need to do. Okay. So this is what I walked out and lived out as a child. This is what I saw. But in terms of the stories I was told about her, in terms of how she felt about me, it was actually a lie. See, my mother told me that my grandmother did not want me. She told me this up until my adult age when I was trying to reach out to her. Um, I want to say a couple few years ago, maybe, when I was at my sister's house for the last time. And I was trying to share with her some of the things that had happened in my childhood, trying to get healing, trying to, you know, get, you know, I was always on that path um, on some level. And I had to come to finally realize that most folks don't want healing. They really, you know, they ain't really trying to be bothered with that. All they want is the surface shit. OK. Um, when I told her this for the last time, her response, you know, I was trying to share things that had happened with my grandmother and myself and my mom's, you know, was her response was a very karmic response. I, I know this now. Okay. Um, she was like, well, you know, first she got defensive and tried to make it about her, which is typical of narcissism. Then she um, said, well, you know, your grandmother didn't really want you. You know, that's kind of why she did those things to you. But it was all a part of the karmic's my mom plan. My mom knew similar to how my sister knew. Okay. Some things about who we really were. And, um, so again, this was another way to attempt to try to hurt me because what mother in her soundness and wholeness you know, and sincere care for her own offspring is going to speak that way on something where the, the person is trying to get some kind of a healing understanding and some, some alchemy about some shits that has affected them as a person. So, you know, as I've continued to dig deep and go on my own path and own journey, a lot has been revealed. The, my grandmother is not an excuse. She gets the review. Everybody gets the review when they pass. So she had to go through a review. Okay. Depending on what it had been, that's where that's all determined. See, even for the, the star seeds and earth angels. So in her review, something had happened for her with Anubis or one of the other, you know, however that works, that it was like, okay, under whatever had came out in her review, she was granted something based on what happened. So she became one of my spirit guides. She was allowed to remedy something in this way. And because of the violations, okay, that were done to her, her path by her karmic daughter, her karmic you know, family members that had been sending distorted energy to her. This is how she became who she became after she passed, my grandmother, okay? But in that, my mother and my sister did not want me to know who I really was or my grandmother. Because when they become a guide or they graduate in that, it's very powerful. That connection is powerful. That's where you get the truths. That's where the light is shone on a lot of things. And they can help you navigate through the fuck shits. 
So they did, they wanted that connection to be cut off and distorted, wanted me to be afraid of her. So they did a lot of dream work, manipulation, mind control, um, and all these things. Um, cause that's what black, you know, magicians do. Okay. When I say black, I'm not talking about ethnicity. I'm talking about those who practice the dark arts, if you will, whether they are displaying that with a name tag or not. Okay. So they wanted me to be afraid of her because of what I had experienced, first of all, on the earth when she was in her earth form, not understanding all of that. And, um, you know, constantly wanted that separation there. Come to find out my grandmother always loved me and she wanted to protect me. She actually loved me. Okay. Um, even as she took me on as a child, she knew that um, there was something different. You know, she had her own pain and drama and trauma, as I've already mentioned, towards the end of her life. Um, a lot of that was subsiding for her, but the damage had been done because she had been under severe um, black magic and spells and, and, and hexes and things of that nature. So her body had already taken a major hit. Um, it was kind of too late in that way by the time, you know, she was kind of trying to come out because she was still tightly wound and connected to a man-made religion, which is a whole nother video because there's a curse connected to it. But I'm gonna have to talk about that another time. So she, all the stories, you know, for, so for some of you, this is going to be the same. It was all lies. It was the parents that didn't want you. It was the parents that was doing the hexes, you know, and the curses and stuff since I was born, actually. And that's probably the same thing for you. And it's probably, you know, whether it is your mother, your father, or, you know, the step people or whoever they ended up going to. Because like I said, my mom had another child after me and their people were into some pretty dark stuff. And, you know, that is where I think a lot of it came from. OK, but a lot of it is kept quiet. See, but that's where the hexes started. So they hexed me at birth. It was more than one. It was two. And hexed my grandmother. And when we're not yielded and surrendered and doing our healing work, you know, that's where your defense is. It's something I've learned. Your defense is in your surrender. Your defense is there. I'll, you can go to any building you want and you can believe whatever you say you believe in. But I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> your defense is in your surrender. Not to people. Not to man-made religion. I'm going to tell you that now. Half of it is going on up in there. You're going to find that out. Some of y'all are going to find that out the long and hard way like most of us. Okay? So... But they lie to get you to disconnect, to get you to not believe, to get you to be afraid, to get you to continue to surrender your control and power over and over again, whether it be to man-made religion or to the narcs and to the karmics, okay, because this is how they feed. But once I discovered the truth about my grandmother, I told her, on her behalf, I'll speak. That's a part of it. Things that she did not get to say, that she didn't get to do on this earth. But this is why she showed up in many different ways for me, which in the earlier phases of this thing for me, I, I was falling out of chairs because I was like, this is a little nutsy, a little weird and shit. You know, I was, <laughs> to this day, I swear to God. To this day, I laugh because I'm like, oh, hell no. When I first saw her, when I saw her in my, my Oracle deck, I I think I'm going to get that picture. I'm going to get that card. I, I think I'm going to do that and just put it on somewhere and be like, tell me this ain't crazy and shit. Why is she on the card? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I believe that it was her way of saying like the one thing that they're trying to get you to run from, Brandy, the one thing they're trying to get you afraid of. 
because they don't want you empowered. They want you constantly relying on them to tell you your truth so you can be vulnerable prey to their bullshit. You've lived many lives as a divine and they don't want you to remember that. They want you feeling weak and vulnerable. They want you to feel like you're crazy because they're crazy. (laughs) But I'm here. When I embrace that with her, and the more I embrace that, the more I saw interesting things happen. Where I was just like, oh, shit. Like some some of the stuff had me flipped out, you know, and, and, you know, and she's only one of my guides. I, you know, there's a lot of things that they're revealing about the history of my family and those that have passed on. Um, some of the other star seeds and earth angels that died at the hand, you know, of my mom's toxicity, being a karmic and the things that she was into, um, which created a lot of, it's like that black widow energy. It's like that praying mantis energy. You will notice that a lot of people drop dead around them. Okay. It will have an appearance of natural causes. It will have an appearance of, oh, they was, oh, because they target those, you know, it's easier to, the, the magics and the shits could work easy. And then if they're in their care, they can really do some woo wooey shit. Okay. You know, so they can manage to get them under their roofs and shit. It's real easy. It's easier. Okay. And um, it's very, it's unfortunate. But I just want to say that don't think that karmics aren't given. I, I need to say this. Don't believe, okay. I'm sorry about that. Don't believe that they're not given the same opportunities as anyone else to change, to heal, to get right to stop doing certain things, okay? They are. They're given the same opportunities as any other person. You know how we call it the conscious, right? We say, you know, is your conscious speaking to you? And, you know, we we say all of these verbiages or whatever, right? That's telling us like, uh, you shouldn't, uh, right? So... Everyone is, okay, including those that would be called karmics. Because when they get their review, it's done. It's not how we think. It's not like us. You know, I makes the jokes because that's my human nature and I like to clown, okay? But <laughs> it's it's very different. It's It's almost like a matter of fact and very neutral. And whatever, you know, the universal laws that are established by the higher ups, they're executing accordingly. Okay. Non-bias. It's non-bias. It's not bent. It's based on what this review right here. Whoa. Right here. Okay. These spiritual laws, boom, boom, boom. It's that simple. Okay. So, you know, (laughs) yes, it's, it's like devastating what happens in some of these cases, but At the end of the day, I'm going to keep saying this probably until my guides tell me, okay, enough of that already. Go on to something different, (laughs) you know. But if we want to demystify some of this shit, I say this all the time. I'm like, okay, let me bring it on home. Let me bring it down to the ones that's wanting it to be regular. Let me do that. Let me bring it 3D, those that are 3D based. Let me make it practical. Because then if I go there, it's really hard to debate. It's hard. Because when we look at any types of violations in this 3D, we all have some type of feelings and emotions about certain things. Even if we took out spirituality, belief systems, and any other things that some people would say is hocus pocus and whatever. But I'm going to tell you something. When we bring it home, bring it to the earth and make it personal. Because, see, when we look out this way, we sit back on our couches. This is why you're looking at a couch and table. We sit back. We sit back on our couches and our, our shits. And, you know, it to us is entertainment until it's us. 
it's entertainment until until it's us. And so I'm going to go here because a lot of us don't want to believe. We shake our head. We close a blind eye. We shrug our head. We go, no, no. We look at the surface of things. We sit on our couch. When we bring it in, when it becomes very personal now, see, when it's you sitting in a seat, it's like those stories that when nobody wants to believe you and you go around and something is happening to you and because of things like, like I said, the American Psycho, I use these movies because these are atypical stories of people that have managed to create an illusion and an image for themselves to the world for a long time and have virtually everybody convinced, but they're killers. Okay. They're killers. They're thieves. They're criminals. They're con artists. All these things, this stuff is real. So for the person that's sitting in it, that it's being done to sits with the frustration of everybody around them is thinking that, they're crazy because these people, this spell work, and these people have managed to create this profile appearance and image to people that are equally asleep or just not in the know, you know, kind of whatever you want to call it. But it don't make it not real, do it. It don't mean that it ain't so, does it? Just because they've managed to convince a whole community of folks the illusion. This is why it serves us and it served me and has helped me and will continue to. This is why we have to get to the place of you got to get to the place of not caring. It's not meant to be hurtful, but if it has to be, then it let, so let it be. Because if you spend your life trying to convince people that can't be convinced because they're blind, they're asleep, or they're under the spell, because these people put spells on everybody to serve them in the way they need them to serve. So you have to get to a place to get to get okay with the fact that people are going to look at you in a certain light. And and here's what's going to help you. When you know, first and foremost, you ain't done now nothing wrong to people or what they're accusing you of, it don't matter to you. You know that you're backed and supported and that when it all unfolds, it will all speak, no matter how long it takes. Okay? Also, as you yield to your your guides and, and what's helping you on your own healing journey and path, you'll start to see for yourself without nobody needing to come and tell you anything. You'll start seeing and experiencing for yourself that, ah, Eureka, whether people like me or not, believe me or not, I am actually supported. Why? Because I am in alignment with source My path with love, I am indeed innocent. When I say innocent, I'm not saying perfect. I'm not implying nothing you've ever done was wrong. I'm implying based on the violations that was done to you, as well as all of the lies and fuck shit, you are innocent. And because of that, there's high ranking backing. So we have to give up, be willing to give up. Hey, they ain't going to believe you. You don't have to be okay with that. Hey, they're going to be, you know, They're going to jump on the bandwagon along with these motherfuckers, okay? You got to be okay with that. You're going to actually have to cut them off because as long as people are in that energy of believing the lies about you and cheerleading for and backing the abuser, you don't want them around you because chances are they're still under the spell. And if they're still under the spell, that means their mind could be puppeteered just like that to say and do whatever the abuser want them to do. 
the spellcaster, the black, you know, dark witch, dark wizard, warlock, whatever you want to call it, because this ain't, this ain't gender bias, understand? This is anybody that's in their distorted energy, the karmic template, and using any type of high-level manipulation or spiritual or energetic practices to inflict and intrude harm upon another. You have the right, if you're a divine being, called judgment. I've done that and I will continue to, to execute the full extent of judicial law under the laws of the universe, but under the leadership of my higher self, as well as my spiritual guidance team of benevolence, including one of my guides, which is my grandmother, but all of the others. I am handing it to them, but I'm calling it. And as they give me direction, I follow suit. Okay, and you have a right to do that. All of that heavy, toxic, dark energy that was ever sent to you, the hexes, the word curses and rituals and hoodoo, hoodoo, all of that shit. You actually, when you get into that position, you actually can take the hand and actually reroute that energetically and command it accordingly. Almost like a rewrite. Nope, let's reroute it. I want it to hit what they wanted it to hit for me. Take it back. Okay. All of it. Take it back. I wanted to hit what they wanted it to hit for me. 1,000 in this life. Then write that shit down. Oh, they fencing too. I'm fencing to write this shit and it's happening. You have to get in that position. Otherwise, you guys, it, it, it sounds heavy, right? I get that. But divines, we carry this human jacket. And... If we don't position ourselves that way, your defense gets weak and this is what they prey on. This is why they do the crazy making and want you to be confused and trying to get you to, you know. So this is why you have to take that power position and go, no, no, we ain't no to the no. No, we ain't. Nope. No, we not. I'm uh-uh. I uh-uh. So they want you to get into where you're weepy and, and it's like, so I had to ask my grandmother as well as my other team. I'm like, man. Because I was alerted about certain things. Nobody notified me nothing. Not one. Nothing was visible on any platform for me to know anything. I was alerted by my spirit guides. Yep. They were the ones that came to me and that's when I just dropped in my chair. That's how it happened for me. When they told me what was happening. It wasn't because somebody texted me, somebody called me, um, or I saw something. I saw nothing and was never notified of anything. So I dropped. I sat down. And so that's why I said, okay, well, and then, you know, of course I cried. I mean, because I couldn't, there, I couldn't hold it all back. So I just, I sat there and just put my hands over my face. And then I just, at that time, then... I asked my grandmother as well as my other guides. I said, well, I'm like, please, you guys going to have to give me strength here because I, you just do. I, this is a lot. It's a lot. And because they kept preparing me like a week prior to that, they kept preparing me and saying certain things. And I was just kind of like, OK, OK, well, whatever. I wasn't really taking it. I was like, oh, maybe they're just like, OK, they're just saying some of the crazy shit is going to be over. Yay. But, you know, I was not really going that, I wasn't going there, there, but they was like saying shit. They kept revealing shit and saying shit about a week, you know, in advance, a week, almost two. And I was like, fuck, okay, well, you know, and then when they, when they happened, all that happened is I was walking, I was walking through my kitchen and I think it was my grandmother. She said, it's done. And so I sat down and I started talking and I started asking questions. I was like, what, what, what? And I sat there and um, I asked for strength to be strong, a strength to keep going and be tough. And, you know, because, you know, basically they were after my life and my sons and did some pretty insidious things to me and my son and my life and my path all behind my back, whether people want to believe this or not. 
Um, and I let go of that, too, because I'm like, I have no energy or time or interest in trying to convince anybody now nah, nothing else. Especially for people that didn't even inquire properly for themselves with me. Um, I was done. My grandmother knew that. I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> it's done. Um, so, you know, that's why I'm trying to bring this home to the 3D for people that don't want to go too woo woo y and all that. It's like, well, when you're the one that's been violated, you'll sing a whole nother song. If it's your only begotten son, you only had one, and you come to realize that your own family was doing stuff to hurt them, you would have you would shed not one tear. If you knew emphatically that they came after your baby because they're sick, you wouldn't be talking about do this and do none of that. You'd be like, nah, my fuck, especially some of you. Some of you that I know got tempers. Uh, wouldn't be trying to hear now, nothing now, nothing. And, it, and whether it was your mama or your daddy or your whoever. So that's why I'm like, I, I, you know, we have to be able to separate from that. But I bring it home so people could, you know, like getting in people's face, basically, because we talk a lot of shit. We say a lot of things when we're trying to impress other folks and, you know, whatever we're doing. But at the end of the day, if it was us in that seat and we know emphatically, <laughs> you wouldn't be saying an old song. You would want justice for every violation done to you. You would want justice for every violation done to your kid. You would not be trying to hear now nah, nothing, no, motherfucker. No, and no, and no again. That's why I tell people, I say this, I'm like, yeah, mm hmm. Let's just see. Let's see. Let's, let's play. Let's see what happens when it hit home. When this is no longer a movie we're watching as we sit on our couch with our popcorn. When, when this is no longer about them. When it's now us. And nobody wants to believe you because you're the eccentric one, see? We see all this play out time after time. Yet. When it happens, nobody wants to believe it. Or expect the one that's been violated to be gracious. They were already gracious. It's no more time for cover up. This is why bloodlines stay cursed. They think. They're getting away from the curses by smiling and going to a barbecue and a family reunion. They think by having a big old dinner and going to a church service, it's not happening. The truth must be dealt with. And change must happen. Not everybody's got the balls for that. Divines do. But they suffer because of it. Because they won't go along with the humdrums and status quo of what's been forever and has proven to be a dead end. Because they will no longer be tongue biters and enablers. And turn the blind eye to people who are not right and pretend like they didn't see nothing. Because, oh, God forbid, people know the truth. This is where mental illness comes from. Denial. 
squelching things, putting band-aids on things, thinking if you buy more shit, eat more shit, get more shit, then you'll be well. Not so. Oh, well, if I cast a spell, well, now you're just added to the damn list of curses you will inherit on your whole get down. And when you die, you in for a surprise. It was all eyes. <laughs> Divine beings. It was never you. I, I need this to be heard. It took me a long time. It was never you. The things about you was a result of long years of narcissistic abuse at the hands of karmics. Trauma. You had trauma and as a result, relived trauma and kept attracting trauma, trauma on top of their spell work, trauma. Okay. So you had to go through, but it was never you. It was always them. It's interesting. It was never you. They wanted to project their mental illness, their instability, and their black magic onto you. So as you look back and in review, because most divines don't have a problem being alone or standing alone. It's one of their marks. Okay, they cry, they feel like everybody else. Okay, but they don't they don't have that group control mentality. They don't need to be feeding off of energy all the time. They don't need to get 12 people on the phone and you know what I'm saying? They they don't need that. Okay. So who's the codependent after all? You see? The problem, they don't like when people have the power to detach and go on. This is where the, the destruction comes in. How dare you live outside of what I want you for? How dare you live and be great and be happy and smile and laugh and I don't get a piece of it? I know it's painful and I'm not trying to make light of that. If you've gone through anything like what I'm saying. But what I've learned is when I had to sit there with myself and be told not by a human being, but by my spirit guides, what had happened in my own family. As I sat there, I realized that sometimes we have to allow ourselves to be in anger we're taught that anger is wrong. We're taught that if you're in anger, ooh, you're not loving now. You're not, oh, oh you must not be a divine. It's, you know, so we, all this conditioning and programming to get people to stay in this docile, mousy, um, tolerant energy of abuse so that you don't take back your power and exert that power that you have the right to do when someone has violated you. Right? Whether, you know what I'm saying, or not, people agree. See, people like to do the trauma bonding. That's one of the narcissistic templates' favorite things of all times to do because they don't know how to connect in healthy ways. So they like to get people to that. It's actually very dangerous for your well-being. Now, see, people, they err for lack of knowledge. They do not understand. They do not understand the effects that it has on you. Okay? It has effects on your neurological system. It has an effect on your adrenals. It has an effect on you psychologically, biochemically. It gets you in an endless, insidious cycle of highs and lows. And attachments to things that are not good for you. So 
I can ex- speak on that. This is one of the main things my sister and my mom used to do all the time. I feel like that's why they did spells on people to kill them off, thinking that that was going to come get me to trauma bond. I, I really believe that with all my heart. I believe that my son's father is dead because I'm telling you why I reached out to him. It was two weeks later. He was dead. I reached out to him after I reached out to him. He reached out to my sister. Two weeks later, he was dead. Then my sister calls me saying, you know, Brandy, Darrell uh, Sr. is dead. So she can what? Get close to my energy again. Trauma bond. Okay. Or when my mom would get sick, because that's the main time people would ever even reach out to me. Because let me tell you something, they showed an out no nag, no nothing to say <laughs> outside of that. Okay. So, you know, mom's sick, she had a heart attack or a stroke, she went to the hospital or or some some shit. That was the only time old, old bloomy bloom. Okay. Why? Trauma bond. So we can get together and talk and be on the phone and saying something and trauma bonding to stay in your energy. To keep feeding off of you and to keep you feeling sorry for them and not seeing them clearly for who they are. And so they got more mad and mad at me because I started doing some deep healing. So I got to a place where I was getting really fed up. I want to say one of the last times. And I was like, click, do, do, do. (laughs) Sick of it. You do get to a place where you're just sick of playing the game. I'm not going to be a performing monkey for you. I'm not going to pretend like we have a connection we do not have. Not going to pretend like a whole lot of shit that's done happen ain't wrong. So you can feel some kind of way. Nope. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> so they amped up the ante then on me at that point. They really super went into some high level spell work. And then beyond the spell work, they started stalking me. Had people stalking me and even still. That's why I'm not playing games. There's a lot of folks that's supposed to be in for some nice surprises. Because it's been determined. I am not playing with nobody. If people don't leave me and my son alone, and I mean business. I'm talking spiritualists. They groups, their crew, whoever the fuck. Not playing. Bloom from within love in which I have created what belongs to me. And they know who they are and they know what I'm talking about. I'm not playing. I ain't playing. My guys aren't playing. I got I got I got it covered on all on all ports. Investigative, investigators, law, in the background silently, see, not playing the games with these people. That was a part of doing harm to me and my son. That was a part of stealing my shit. That was a part of stalking me. Not playing. That was a part of lying to my counterpart. That was a part of all that. All that. I'm not playing. No retreat. No surrender. When we make nice way too long, they get comfortable and think that you're weak. Oh, okay. 
But see, unlike them, there's this is what marks the difference between the divines and karmic individuals. There is a difference, you know. We stand for justice and we also stand in divine order. So what I mean by that is we don't resort to black magic and we don't resort to becoming um, someone that's, you know, stalking people. And, you know, all we do is simply I call it reroute. We call it rerouting. May they receive what they've done. Period. May they receive what they've wanted for me. Period. And whatever that meant. May justice prevail. See, we have a right to do that. On the law, in the land, as you're guided, because you'll get guidance, they'll say, okay, do this, do that, say this, say that, go here, go there, call them, call that one, notify, you know, in order to be covering all sides, okay, energetic and land, okay, these are some thieving kind of motherfuckers, I want they asses bought down, period, by any means necessary without me needing to do anything. Justice must prevail. Justice will, see. But in order for this to work, I've discovered, we have to be willing to embrace that side of who we are. Otherwise, we'll just sit and go, oh, and oh, and poor, no poor now, no poor, no poor, no motherfucker. We have to remember, was it any uh and uh when that shit was on, on, when they was doing the crazy shit to you? Hmm? Or your kid? When they was trying to stalk you down like you're a piece of meat, picking parts and random parts and shit. They're going to the junkyard. What the fuck? What kind of shit is this? See, they, you know, narcissists objectify everything to them. You're just an object and extension of them to serve their need. Outside of that, you shouldn't exist. This is why they seek to kill you and destroy you. Because if you're not going to serve in the way they want you to serve, then you, you serve no purpose for being on the earth. That's how delusional they are. In my case, and this is going to resonate with some of you as well, and so I, I highly recommend you get creative because I just, I was like, okay, we fencing the, me and my guys, I was like, okay, cool, we fencing the, do some shit, because the, the bloomy blow, you know, <laughs> it's kind of funny now for me, but I was like, you know, sometimes your guys will let this happen because when we're too passive, they're like, look. This is a co-collaboration here. You're just sitting up there wishing upon a star. I'm going to need you to get up and fucking and act some shit. God damn it. I'm going to need you to open your mouth, write some shit down and make some damn changes here. Okay. We're doing our part. We need you to do yours. You know, so they'll allow you to get pressured until you finally get to the place of action. But. I got to a point when I did some past life readings and shit, and I discovered some shit that, you know, make old Bloomy Bloom, you know, fall off her chair. <laughs> when I did that, I was like, oh, blow me down and shit. I was like, oh, these some lunatic motherfuckers? I was like, oh, the lunatics fall to me in this lifetime? Listen, I know it sounds funny. It, it, you know, the sound of it, it sounds like for real. But listen to me. For real. In my case, I have, I have several that were in some type of an insane asylum. Something happened to them, okay, in a past life. They were not balanced. And so they ended up in an insane asylums, okay. And some of them did receive the electric shock therapies and the other things. But what happens is when it's reincarnation, they're given opportunity. Okay, they keep resisting healing. They keep resisting healing. They keep resisting, you know, what's meant to help them to get into balance. 
So they travel into other, you know, other lives to hopefully maybe they'll have an opportunity to, okay, get it right, get it right. Okay. But they still have that lunatic energy in their template, their soul's path. Okay. But it's to alchemize it if they choose to, if they want to. But if they keep reneging it, it gets worse and worse. Okay. So then they come in other forms. They will come in a form of your family. Then they'll come in a form of clergy. Then they'll come in a form of various different things because they're still operating in that subconscious frequency to fucking kill you. The mission is to take you out. That's their mission. And in their disillusionment, they 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 reason this out, whether they're hiding it under religion or they're hiding it behind whatever, okay, that drives them to do the black magic and drive them to try to sabotage you and steal from you and hurt, and hurt you and sleep with your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, or, you know, all these weird, dizzy energies. Then they come after your kid because they, they are here. The mission is destroy you. And divines fight this so hard and so long to the point that some of us, some of us, we get taken out because we don't listen. See, I found my freedom. I'm telling y'all right now, we're all bloomy bloom. Why bloomy is okay right now? Because I let it all go. Yep. I let it all go. That's where I found my peace. And that's where I found freedom. That's where I found refuge. That's where I found a lot of support from my guys when I said, bye-bye, baby, bye-bye to all of it. Anybody and anywhere that was going to stay connected to lunatics. When I said that, I was like, I don't have time to sit down and do patty cake. I don't have time to sit there. I tried that and my fuckers didn't hear me. So they're going to have to go their route. It's like, okay, and I'm fencing the heel. And, and I did, and I healed, and I let it all go. And I didn't care about how it looked anymore. I didn't care about whatever and all this. And You have to get like that. It's like the matrix. I mean, I try to tell people this that's on this path. I'm like, okay, well, they're going to find out their own way. Oh, bloomy bloom. It's just going to keep, li- you know, <laughs> doing what she got to do. Because we want people to come with a label and a a name tag that says, hello, I'm a karmic and I'm here to fucking kill you. This is what we're expecting. And that's delusional. It's going to always be something near and dear to you because that's the only way you can take somebody down. You can't take somebody down, you know, with the, the name tag and says, I'm here and I hate you. Run, motherfucker. (laughs) <laughs> we have to learn how to read energy. And so another thing I've learned is, ah, oh, that's why they want you in chaos. Now I get it. This is why they want you tired, overworked, ran down, bogged down. They use lust to keep you tied up in lusty energy because they don't want you to be able to fucking read, to read their energy. Because when we're in distortion, we don't see straight. This is why they're always on you, on you, on you. Because if you mess around, back the fuck up somewhere and shit, whoa, when you mess around, they don't like this part. Because when you do this, it's like, ooh, I done fucked up because I, they, my illusions ain't working no more. God damn it. My sex magic, my shit, you know what I'm saying? My chaos. <laughs> they be pissed because, yeah, because now you're clearing your energy and you're not fucking tired from running in circles trying to appease karmic energy because that's something else they do you be the fucking puppet and shit running around the americas and shit trying to you know saying ding dong (laughs) trying to make motherfuckers happy get them this get them that buy this buy that fuck me here fuck me there fuck me everywhere and you just and it's like oh yeah addictions 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 and you're tired as fuck and tired as fuck can't think straight can't think straight can't think straight (laughs) Exactly. When I walked away, I said, we will. 
I will know, I will see, I will hear, and I will clear. When I did that, it was like, boom, oh, bloomy, bloom, came in full effect. Wonder Woman and shit, nine lives, bitches. Nine lives, motherfuckers. <laughs> and my guides, and I'm grateful for it, they literally six of swords. You know, the six of swords in tarot for realsies for my life. That's what they did. They're like, no, we not, no, we see all you nasty motherfuckers. We see all you motherfuckers. Las Vegas, Nevada, posing as spiritualists, posing as this, posing as that. Motherfuckers, after old Bloomy Bloom, you gonna wish you didn't do it. And so it is. <laughs> It's not arrogance, you know? I, I laugh because it's like, I can only imagine what people say, but that's why I have comfort and solace in what truth is because it's like, no, it actually isn't. It's not at all. It's power. It's understanding who you are and understanding what you deserve. We have a right to be here and we have a right to defend ourselves and we have a right to speak our truth and we have a right to not take people's shit because they think they're entitled. No, the fuck, who told you? No and no again. Eh. We have a right to be treated with honor. Same regard that narcissists have hissy fits for. You see what I'm saying? They can't take what they dish out. They cannot. That's something I've learned. They cannot. They can't. They can't. They can't fucking. They can't, motherfuckers. They can't, I'm telling you. They can't. They can't take it. They can trash you all over the Americas. But when that when they in the hot seat, they fall on the park. They could target to destroy everything you love. And then when it's them, they don't know how to act and want to get 12 motherfuckers, put spells on 12 motherfuckers to do some dumb shit for them. And now them 12 motherfuckers going to have to pay right along with them. It's time <laughs> to embrace that. I know I embrace the Hioka. I happen to be Hioka empath. It took me some time to figure all that out and find that out. I had to go on a journey to discover all of it. But when I did, I was like, oh my God. But this is why they're afraid of you too. This is why they fight to try to tear you down and make you feel some kind of way, low, less than, not believe in yourself. Because when the Hioka awakens and aligns to their power, they have the power just as power. It's like, that was not the one that was not, not wise to do, right? It wasn't. But we all have to learn this. We all have to learn it. So you guys are very welcome, whoever's coming on here. I hope that it's empowering. And please do the best you can to align with your guides or whatever that is for you. But just know that trauma bonding is never the way. You need to be a priority, your health and your well-being and what you're being guided to do, not what someone else tell you you're being guided to do. We have to get in there ourselves. It has to jive with us because everybody has ulterior motives usually, you know, and they ain't going to tell you that they're going to smile and make all sorts of promises. And so I had to learn that. OK, um, and then just keep moving forward and, and just know, OK, not everything is as it seemed. Most of what they've told you since you were a child, you know, and on was probably lies to keep you feeling disempowered. Okay. Someone says, thank you for giving me strength. Oh, well, if this is so and true for you, you know, then, then I'm, I'm most grateful then. Okay. Cause that's what this thing is all about at the end of the day. Okay. All right, you guys, I'm going to go and, um, uh, Hope y'all have a wonderful whatever time it is, wherever you're on the globe. <laughs> and remember, as long as you stay attached to karmic energies, they're sapping your energy. You're never going to inherit your divine birthright. And essentially, they will destroy you. Sometimes slowly, but other times, 
rapidly. We cannot transform a karma. They're here to serve as lessons and for us to move on, whether we've known them all our lives or not. Namaste.